Hello, my beautiful shabby friends. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new, I'm so glad you're here. My name is Becky and welcome to Kinda Shabby. Do you enjoy DIY and decorating? Well then stick around. If you like what you see, please subscribe, like, and comment. Now today's video is going to be a collaboration with Sola Wood Flowers and I cannot wait to show you the beautiful things that we are going to be creating with these gorgeous flowers. Now I ordered the 50 mini flower assortment and the 100 random flower assortment. So I'll be showcasing some of each of those as we create our projects. Now today we will be making a wood sign, a floral hoop ring. It's hard to see this, but once we get our flowers on there, it'll definitely show up. I'm going to be embellishing these cute little chipwood figures. They're butterflies that I picked up from Tuesday morning, and they're going to be so cute. And then just some little Dollar Tree pumpkins. It's never too early to start on those fall crafts because the early bird gets the worm and the best of the crafting supplies. So let's go ahead and get these projects started. My wood sign is just a scrap piece of one by six that I asked Mr. Shabby to cut down to 22 inches for me. I have painted that in the Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And so while that's drying, we are going to be dyeing some of these flowers. Now, when I ordered them, I specifically wanted them in the natural so I can make any color combination that I wanted to. However, you don't have to do that. They have so many colors. So if you prefer not to dye your own, then you can just buy them in whatever color preferences that you want. Now I am going to be dyeing them in various colors of pink because the sign that I'm making is a cute little shabby chic sign. So I'm going to have lots of beautiful rosy colors and this one is already drying. So what I have done is taken various colors of pinks here. This is Berry Wine Folk Art. This one is Cranberry Apple Barrel, and this one is Pink Bliss Craft Smart. And I'll also have those colors listed for you below. And when you dye your flower, you can take them, fill a bowl, put some paint in there, and just immerse the whole thing. But I wanted to try something different. So what I've done is taken each of those paint colors in these little plastic, clear plastic bottles, and I've mixed some paint and some water. So a couple of squirts in there, and then I just put a little bit of water in each one, gave it a little shake, and now what I'm gonna do is just take that color and just squeeze it all over the flowers. I will be adjusting the camera and bringing you in closer so you can see exactly what that looks like close up. So while all of this is drying, let me adjust that and we'll get a better look. So I have a cookie sheet here with some paper towels lying down just to be able to absorb the water. And I also have just a little Tupperware container and you can see I've got the roses in there and I am just taking the water and just squeezing it onto those petals. And I know, as I said, you can submerge these if you like, but I just found that this is just a little less messy for me. Also, they have dye that you can purchase from Sola that you don't have to use paint, you can use their dye. So I'm going for a little bit of an ombre effect. You can see that there's lighter in the middle and darker around the edges. So I've just taken and put the lighter color in first, and then I just go in with the darker color all around the outside. And it just gives it that beautiful ombre look. And even when you see roses in nature, they're not all just one color. Now, as that water soaks in, you can then start 
adjusting your flower petals because once it's wet it is very very pliable and you would think with it being wood that they would be hard but they're not hard at all they're very very soft I'm going to put more around the middle here and I'm going to go in with that darker color isn't that gorgeous look how pretty that is get more of that color on the back I'll just squeeze it just a little bit to get those colors all the way through there and when those colors combine look how pretty that is my goodness these are just so beautiful look at just using three different colors look at the color combinations that I have here in these three roses I love that so we're going to go ahead and get back to our wood sign. For the lettering of my wood sign, I will be using the Iron Orchid Designs Decor Stamp in the Pattern Typesetter. And I'm going to be spelling out the word cottage. And what I have done is placed my letters evenly in the center of my board. And when I place the letters, I actually place them down where the ink is going to go. Then I take my quilt ruler and I'm going to place it against the edge here and on the bottom edge. Now I'm just going to lay it down on top of those letters and give it a good push. And when I do that, my letters are now stuck to my quilt ruler and I'm going to ink those up and I'm using the Ranger Archival ink in the color Vibrant Fuchsia. And I've left a space here to be able to go back in and add that other T once all of these other letters have been stamped. Take a baby wipe here and clean up because I've gotten some ink around the outside edges when I don't want it and because I used this edge and this edge of my board now I know if I just take my ruler rest it on the edge there and then place it down I know my design is going to be in the middle and now all I have to do is take one hand hold and just walk my fingers with gentle pressure all around those letters and that we get a nice beautiful clean impression you do want to apply firm pressure but not so much pressure that you are going to distort the image of that letter now that I've covered the entire surface I'm going to lift straight up and that's what we have so far. Now we're going to go back in and we are going to place that other T. Re-ink this T and I will hover over, centering that between the O and the other T and placing it down. And then lift straight up. And there we go. That is so pretty. For our next project, we are going to be using our Sola wood flowers in their natural state. Look how beautiful these are. My goodness. I mean, each one that you pick up is just more beautiful than the last. They are so pretty. And this is a hoop ring that I picked up from Walmart. I snipped off some of this garland that I get. This is the eucalyptus garland that I pick up from Hobby Lobby. So we're just going to start by deciding where we want our eucalyptus to lie. That looks good there. So I'm going to move this piece. I'm just going to take some of my wires and I'm going to start wiring it on. And you're basically just going to loop this on. And what I'm doing is just going between these sections here and just pulling it tightly. And that's all we're going to do until we have this firmly adhered. And now I want this to stay here, so I'm going to wire that down as well. 
so we have one side done. How pretty is that? And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So now that we have our greenery attached, we're going to come back in and add our flowers. Let's see, I like that one. That looks pretty. That looks good. So I am just going to load up the greenery, the back of the flower, everything with glue. And we're just going to hang out and hold it there for a little bit. Then I want to nestle this one right in here. Many of the flowers have these nice long areas on the back, perfect for gluing and adhering to your surface. That is just gorgeous. The greenery is a little sparse in here, so I'm just gonna take some more of these pieces and just wire some more greenery on to fill in some of these bare spots here. But other than that, our wreath is finished and that was so quick and easy and look how beautiful that is. Now for our two little pumpkins here, this is just so quick and so easy. There is hardly anything to this. For our first little pumpkin, these are just little plastic. We're gonna pop out that stem. I don't throw these away, I save these because I can reuse them in other crafts. And I have chosen three of these from the little minis. Look how pretty those are. And I'm just going to basically, I want to kind of glue them together in a little triangle and then I'm going to glue them on top of the pumpkin as well. So I'll start with these two here, gluing them together, put the glue and glue them to our pumpkin. And then we're going to bring this other one in and add glue to our pumpkin to our other flowers here. And hold all of that in till it sets. And that's cute in and of itself. I always like to give it just a little bit of something. So I've taken these two little lavender sprigs that I cut from this big lavender bush that I pick up at Walmart. And I'm just gonna find a spot where I think that's gonna look cute. Put some glue on the end and tuck it in and hold till it sets. Same thing. And we're done. How quick and easy was that one? This next one, just as easy. Now for this one, this is one of those Dollar Tree styrofoam pumpkins that are normally um, bright orange and bright green. So I just painted this top in the Waverly truffle and the base of it in Waverly plaster. And I have chosen five of these that are very similar in size and shape to each other. And just look how beautifully those colors coordinate with the color that I painted this pumpkin here. We're just gonna glue these around our pumpkin stem here. We're gonna hold that till it sets. Now we're just gonna come over the top with our little rosette. It looks like one of the ones that I make with fabric, doesn't it? But this was actually a solo wood flower. That is so pretty. Now we're not finished. I snipped some of these little leaves off of this Dollar Tree flower. And where there's that seam there on either side of the pumpkin, I'm gonna lift this up and place that leaf there just to kind of cover up and camouflage that seam. And then same thing over here. And then the last one I'm gonna tuck right here. I'm not gonna glue it down to the pumpkin itself. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of glue, put right in here and tuck it up underneath right there. And that's it. Look how pretty that is. Isn't that gorgeous? 
so quick and so easy and so beautiful. For our little butterfly project, we are going to be using our Tim Holtz decoupage papers in floral. So we'll need our Mod Podge and we'll need a little brush and I'll be using my Bondo spreader to apply that paper. But these were a set of two, and I picked these up at Tuesday morning, and you can see they were $3.99. This is just so cute. Now that is the design inspiration that they gave you on the back, but I want to do something a little more shabby chic. See how I want my pattern to lie. Roll that back, apply my Mod Podge, take my Bondo spreader, Start in the middle here and just spread that evenly over my little butterfly wings. And now we're going to do the other side. And again, we're going to start in the middle. Okay, that looks so good. I love it. Set that off to dry. Do our big one. Here's our big one, and I'm going to go ahead and decoupage this other side, and then I'm just going to continue dyeing the flowers that I'm going to need, and we will come back tomorrow and apply all of our dyed flowers to our butterfly and our cottage sign. Now that our flowers are dry, it's time to finish off our sign and also our butterflies. After the paint was dry and the ink was dry, I did go back over it with some fine grit sandpaper just to roughen it up a little bit and bring out some of the texture of the wood. And now to finish off the sign, I have some shabby tassels that will be going on either end. And then we'll be stapling this beautiful piece of lace also to make the hanger and then we'll be applying our flowers and that is just going to be so beautiful now for your flowers I did want to show you um, some of them you may have to cut down because they are not all flush at the back and I left this one to show you how you can trim these down. You don't want to trim it too close because then you risk your flower coming apart but you just take your scissors and snip off some of that excess until you get it to where it's a nice even surface so then when you glue it on it's going to give you a surface there for your glue to adhere to. I'm going to apply a little bit of glue on the side here and then I'm going to put a little glue here on the top as well and then I'll drape that and staple that to the back. Now this is my personal sign so I didn't paint the back of this. If I were going to sell this I would definitely do a paint wash on the back just to give it a more finished appearance. Same thing on this side just a touch at the top and now I can bring these to the back. I'm going to put just a little bit of glue to hold that in place where I want it. Then I'm going to come back and staple it just to give it some extra security. Now I'm going to apply several staples. Now we're going to apply our flowers. I think that looks good. Perfect. And there we go. Look how beautiful that is. I can't wait to get this staged up and show you just how cute all of this looks. I love how that turned out. I've done the flowers for the butterfly in more of a peachy coral to match these roses here and I think that just turned out so pretty and I've got these roses that I'll be putting on the larger butterfly and these cute little ones that I'll be putting on our smaller butterfly. Once I trimmed the paper off with just some regular scissors I took my finger 
slightly wet it and then put some Mod Podge on it and ran it around the edges just to secure those edges down. So pretty. I was thinking about doing the yellow, but I didn't think it would show up on camera. There we go. Our beautiful butterflies. Can't wait to get these staged up and give you a close-up view of just how gorgeous these butterflies turned out. I hope you enjoyed today's projects featuring Sola wood flowers. Come back next week for more kinda shabby, but always chic, crafty inspirations. And until then, my friends, be blessed.